This is the iFi Zen Stream. It's not a DAC, it's not an AMP, it's a network streamer, and it's a damn good one. But what exactly is a network streamer even for? Well, in this episode of The Headphone Show, I'm going to be talking about why I'm quite a fan of the Zen Stream and how it can offer some not just convenient features, but potentially provide an improvement in sound quality for your system. The basic purpose of a network streamer is, as the name implies, to take an audio stream from a player software on your network and output it to the connected DAC, rather than connecting the DAC via USB directly to a PC. There's an increasing number of devices on the market with streaming and the DAC itself built into one product, but the ZenStream is a digital-only device, and there's two key reasons why you might want one. The first is simply convenience, or needing to set up a system without a PC present. This can be something as simple as a two-channel system with no PCs in the room, or as complex as a full-on multi-room system in your house, in which case you'll need a network streaming endpoint for every room. For both of these purposes, the ZenStream is a very flexible device, and there's a variety of ways in which you can incorporate it into your setup. You can hook it up either via Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and then you can stream to it using Rune, Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, DLNA casting, and also HQ Player's Network Audio Adapter if you're into upsampling. For those of you using FUBAR, there's a casting plugin which allows it to stream to devices like this. The ZenStream can be set to accept any of these protocols at the same time for maximum flexibility, say if you use Rune most of the time, but then you want to use AirPlay now and then. Or, using the switch on the back, you can set it to exclusively use one, shutting down any unnecessary software activity not needed for that particular service. And then for outputs, you can either connect your DAC to the ZenStream via USB or coaxial SPDIF. But it's not without limitations. Firstly, it's got no I2S or AES outputs, so if you're wanting to use those connections, you're unfortunately going to have to look elsewhere. Secondly, even though it's got a dedicated mode for HQ Player's upsampling software, it's limited to DSD256 and PCM384 kHz. So you can't play DSD512 files and you can't upsample to 768 kHz or 1.5 MHz if you have a DAC that supports it. Not exactly an issue for the vast majority of people, but if you do have DSD512 files, for example, that might be a bit of a limitation for you. And the second reason why you might want a network streamer like the ZenStream is sound quality. Now, hang on a minute, you're probably thinking, it's ones and zeros, right? Bits are bits. And you're correct, you can't deliver the data itself better. It's either correct or it isn't. But there are two other factors to digital sources beyond data integrity that can measurably and potentially audibly impact the performance of your DAC. The first of these two factors is electrical noise. Even if the actual data itself, the ones and zeros, is completely intact and as it should be, different DACs show different levels of susceptibility to noise from the source device. And I'm not just talking about USB-powered DACs. Even professional-level desktop self-powered devices like the RME ADI-2 or battery-powered devices like the Cord Mojo 2 show measurable differences in performance depending on what source you connect them to. Sometimes this leads to clear and obvious problems, which you will 100% know if you have, like ground loop hum, for example, or in some cases when people connect a DAC to a beefy gaming PC, they can actually hear GPU activity through their chain, so moving their mouse and hearing coil whine in the headphones. In other situations, though, you might not directly hear noise coming out through your device, but there might still be a slight degradation in performance caused by a noisy source. And so whilst in the majority of circumstances, connecting your DAC directly to your PC via USB is fine. And if you don't hear any problems, don't worry about it. But there can be some situations where using a clean, low noise source like the ZenStream can be a good option, either to fix a clearly audible issue or just for peace of mind knowing that you're getting the absolute best performance out of your DAC. The second important performance aspect is jitter or timing error. Even if all of the ones and zeros are again absolutely correct, and there's no noise whatsoever, the timing with which data is converted makes a difference. A digital to analog converter needs to convert the incoming digital audio at a constant rate, and the device which instructs it on when to do this is called a crystal oscillator, commonly referred to as a clock. Think of this as the conductor or metronome for the DAC itself. Better clocks will be more precise and consistent, whereas poorer ones will have more variation in their output. And when the correct data is converted at slightly the wrong time, this leads to distortion. Unfortunately, this is where things start to get a little bit confusing, because what influences jitter depends on how you're connecting your DAC. Now, the important thing to know about USB is that the DAC is in charge of timing. 
data gets sent to the DAC and put into a buffer. And the DAC then converts this using its own internal clocks. So the source device you use does not have a direct impact on jitter. You might see quite a lot of USB reclockers on the market. There isn't any evidence that these make any difference at the moment, and there's not really an explanation as to how they could, because that's not how USB audio works. But that's not the case for SPDIF, AES, and I2S. With connections like SPDIF, AES, and I2S, the digital source is actually providing a clock signal to the DAC, which instructs it when to convert. So not only does the digital source have a direct and measurable impact on the performance of your DAC, but if the clocks in the digital source are more accurate than the ones in your DAC, you can potentially get a performance upgrade by using that digital source instead of just connecting your DAC via USB. To be clear, this is a simplified explanation, and different DACs have various ways of correcting and attenuating jitter on the incoming signal, replacing that clock signal entirely in some cases, and just generally trying to be less reliant on the performance of the source device to varying degrees of effectiveness. But there's a lot to talk about there, and that's a different video. So after all that talk about noise and jitter, how does the ZenStream hold up? Well, objectively speaking, not only does it have exceptionally low noise USB outputs, but the SPDIF output also has incredibly low jitter, at around 173 picoseconds when measured up to 100 kilohertz. For comparison, this is bested in my testing only by sources costing considerably more, such as the Synxa SU6 and Hollow Red. And it's also beating more expensive dedicated digital to digital converters like the Mutech MC3 Plus and the Gustard U18. So yeah, performance for the money is excellent. Now I'm not going to be talking about subjective sound in this video for a few reasons. Firstly, the audible effects of jitter and the audibility threshold for jitter has had relatively little study done into it, with the main one being back in 1998. This study puts the audibility threshold generally around 2 to 10 nanoseconds depending on content. The jitter at the output of the Zen stream is over 10 times lower than this. Whilst this study was excellent, and I'd encourage you to read it, there is a link in the description, I personally would be quite keen to see more testing done with modern DACs and a wider selection of test subjects. Perhaps that's something we could have a go at doing. Not to mention as well as just the level, there's different types, frequencies, and structures of jitter, which probably will have different audible effects and audibility thresholds, in a similar way to different types and orders of harmonic distortion having different effects and audibility thresholds. But also, a device like this is going to have different effects in different chains. Some setups might see a really nice improvement from a ZenStream, some might see none at all. It depends on how bad your current source is and what else you're using, because different DACs have different ways of filtering out noise and reducing jitter from the source. And so whether this is worth it for you personally is something I can't actually answer for certain. What I can say for certain though is that the iFi ZenStream does give you objectively excellent jitter performance and ultra low noise. So in conclusion, a network streamer can be a very useful device for many types of setups, with this feature set in a compact, well-built and well-engineered package, and for a pretty reasonable price, you probably don't need to look any further than this. I hope you found that video interesting and useful. If you're interested in a ZenStream, they are available at headphones.com. If you'd like to see anything in particular talked about, reviewed, or explained in future, let us know in the comments down below. And if you'd like to ask us any questions directly, come and say hi on our Discord server or the headphones.com forum. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Oh, God damn it.